You know, once in a while, we have a calling. Um, a calling that gives us a sense of purpose and focus. And for those who had the calling already, it's a very lucky thing to have. I know I was very lucky when 18 years ago I had my calling. A calling that was triggered by images in Times Magazine, Newsweek, other media venues, images of Bosnian women, um, survivors of rape camps, images of men actually behind barbed wires in rape camps, interviews with women who are lawyers, doctors, teachers, farmers, housewives, all been raped in a very organized strategy that was carried on in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Unfortunately, these images are not unique to the story of humanity. They are actually, they happen quite frequently in our history and as we speak right now, as you heard earlier, they're happening in countries like Congo. And also fortunately, that with these images comes hope and comes resilience and comes courage and dignity and honor and love. And that's what the privilege that I had to in seeing all of this through founding Women for Women International, a group that supports women survivors of wars in a very, very simple program. It's a one-year program. Every woman in the program is grouped with a group of 25 other women. She goes through an educational program to learn about her rights in society, in politics, in health, in economy. Learning, I call it, or remembering her value. Uh, the value that she had before war destroyed a lot of his life, her life. But with education, and though education is very, very important, we also need to be very practical in addressing women's needs in earning an income. So with the one-year training program, there's also a vocational and business training program. Teaches women vocational skills that address local market needs. From commercial farming, to tile making, to embroideries and jewelry making, um, you name it, to brick making, as a matter of fact, building their own homes in countries like Congo and Rwanda. Um, the calling of one person end up being the calling of more than 250,000 women from all over the world, joining one woman at a time, and I must say, some excellent, wonderful, great men as well. I hope you're, I'm sure, you'll see, some of them are here. <laughs> um, end up helping directly 300,000 women survivors of wars from countries like Bosnia and Kosovo to Afghanistan and Iraq to Rwanda and Congo and Nigeria and Sudan, and hopefully others. We directly impacted 1.4 million family members and distributed $95 million. But more than the generosity, There's the beauty of courage and resilience. For every story of a victim, believe me, there is a story of an amazingly courageous person. A person like Zarkuna, which I recently met in Afghanistan, who was, um, long story, but who at one point was beaten up by the Taliban. In the middle of the beating, she grabbed the whip from the Taliban's hand and threw it. And I asked her, how did you have the courage to do that? She said, it wasn't the pain of the beating, it was the humiliation of being beaten up. Zarkuna, long story, was a widow, single mother, and when she entered our program, she had nothing in her pockets. When I met her recently, after only one year training program, only one year of training program in education and access to resources. She started jewelry cutting and embroideries, and she started employing more and more women. She took a loan after she graduated from our program. The story is she has $30,000 in her bank account right now. She employs 150, 
she employs 150 women. Her daughter is going to college and she is going back to school. Now, I believe in the possibilities of change. I really do. I really do. And I moved from a woman who wanted to help women survivors of wars to women who believe that we must invest in women survivors of wars. Strong women do build strong nations. Um, and there is a way to do it, simple and clear. 95% or rather, sorry, on average, women who enter our program, they earn 55 cents upon entry. Upon exit, with only one year, their income doubled to $1.22. 95% of them change their health practices on nutrition and health. 40% of them immediately, the first act of it, they send their daughters and their boys to school. 90% of them reinvest their income in the family. About 15% end up running for local elections. These are women who are not victims. They are survivors. They are courageous. They are beautiful, as beautiful as you all are here today. today. So thank you for joining us. This group started from really nothing 18 years ago. And it is what it is today, having the privilege of your company this evening. Um, I once, uh, I'm a big believer of, um, rather, I'm a big fan of Rumi, a 13th century Sufi poet. And one of uh, my favorite poems by him, he says, out beyond the world of right doings and wrong doings, there is a field. I shall meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other, no longer makes any sense. Today, I ask, I think that out of beyond the walls of war and peace, women and men, poverty and richness, haves and have-nots, there is a field and may we all meet there, if you are not already there. May we make it bigger and more beautiful. So thank you very much for joining us, and I hope to see you in the field. Thank you.